Welcome to Lesson 10C, 2D Stagnation Point Flow Equation. In this lesson, we'll examine flow at the stagnation point of a blunt 2D body. We'll be able to derive a similarity equation based on work by Carl Hymens, and in the process introduce the boundary layer approximation. In this lesson, we'll develop the equation and we'll solve it in the following lesson. As a quick review, this will be the fourth similarity solution that we discuss. We did Stokes' first problem, diffusion of a vortex sheet, and viscous decay of a line vortex. The present 2D stagnation point flow problem is sometimes called the Hyman's problem. We're considering the stagnation region at the nose of a 2D body. For example, the stagnation region near the front of a 2D airfoil. If we rotate this by 90 degrees, we have stagnation point flow on a vertical body, which is what we're showing here. Keep in mind that we're examining the region very close to the stagnation point itself. Our assumptions and approximations are incompressible Newtonian fluid, 2D into the page, steady, no gravity, and we'll introduce the concept of a thin boundary layer. Viscous forces are confined to this thin region called a boundary layer. We'll deal with boundary layers in much greater detail in a later lesson, but we have to introduce the concept here to solve this problem. Our goal is to calculate the velocity components u and v within this boundary layer, and both are functions of x and y. We begin with the outer flow outside of the boundary layer, which we'll take as irrotational 2D stagnation point flow, where the streamlines look like this. We've already discussed this flow in a previous lesson when we talked about complex potentials. Recall that for a complex potential W equal A Z squared, we described the potential flow in the XY plane as 2D stagnation point flow, where we can split W into potential function phi plus i psi, which is the stream function. z is x plus i y. So this becomes a times x squared plus 2i xy plus i squared y squared, which we can regroup with all the real terms, recognizing that i squared is negative 1, and the imaginary terms. So this first grouping of the real terms is phi, and the component of the imaginary terms is psi. So from this, psi is 2axy. But instead of carrying this 2 along, let's let b equal 2a. So finally, psi equal bxy in the potential outer flow for a 2D stagnation point. I also wrote this out on our diagram. So psi equal bxy is the stream function for the irrotational outer flow, from which we get u equal del psi del y equal bx, and v equal negative del psi del x equal negative by. We note that b is just a constant with dimensions of 1 over time. 1 over time times a length gives a speed. This constant b is related to the magnitude of the free stream velocity approaching a 2D stagnation point, where again for some kind of a 2D body like an airfoil, b would be related to u infinity approaching the body. But we're concerned only with this tiny region near the stagnation point. In a later lesson, I'll show you how b relates to u infinity. Now let's fit in a thin boundary layer. I'll sketch the flow where the x-axis is a wall and the outer flow streamlines look something like this with the stagnation streamline coming straight down to the stagnation point. Now we'll assume that there's a thin boundary layer in here. This part of the flow is rotational, and viscous effects are important, whereas this part of the flow is irrotational. We must satisfy the no-slip condition at the wall, so we expect our profile to look something like that. But this flow is accelerating above the boundary layer, since we know that u equals some constant b times x. Everything is symmetric about the y-axis as well. We'll make an assumption here, namely that the boundary layer is very thin. How thin is it, dude? Well, Joe, it's so thin that it does not affect the irrotational outer flow. That's really thin, dude. <laughs> and what we'll do is match the edge of the boundary layer to the outer flow at the wall. 
As I mentioned, this solution was first done by Hyman's way back in 1911, where Hyman's let psi equal bx times some function f of y inside the boundary layer. And then we must force this to match the outer flow. In other words, at the edge of the boundary layer, psi must approach bxy. Equating these then, it's clear that f of y must approach y at the edge or top of the boundary layer. But this is where it gets a little interesting. We'll say f of y approaches y as y approaches infinity. This is kind of like the giant and the ant problem that we talked about before. From the boundary layer point of view, y goes to infinity, but from the giant's point of view, y goes to zero. In other words, the boundary layer is so thin that the giant doesn't even see it. But from the ant's point of view, the boundary layer is so high up there that the ant sees y going to infinity. Mathematically, let's plug this psi into our Navier-Stokes equations and see what happens. We'll do a little math with some derivatives. Since u is del psi del y, we get b x f prime of y, from which del u del x is b f prime of y, and del u del y is b x f double prime of y. We can continue with other higher order derivatives. Del squared u del x squared is zero, and del squared u del y squared is b x f triple prime of y. Let's call this equation two, where this equation is equation one. Similarly, v is minus del psi del x, which becomes negative b f of y. I'll call that equation three. And we can also write the derivatives del v del x, del squared v del x squared, del v del y, and del squared v del y squared. Let's plug all these into the x and y components of the Navier-Stokes equation. In the x direction, I write out the two-dimensional form without gravity. And using these derivative expressions, we get bxf prime, bf prime, plus negative bf, bxf double prime, equal negative one over rho del p del x, plus nu times zero, plus bxf triple prime. Let's divide all the terms by bx nu and rearrange. We get f triple prime, plus b over nu, f f double prime, minus b over nu, f prime squared, equal one over nu rho b x del p del x. We'll call this equation four. That's our x momentum equation. We do the similar thing with the y momentum equation, and I'll leave the algebra to the students. Our final result is b f f prime, equal negative one over rho b del p del y, minus nu f double prime, which I'll call equation five. To achieve similarity, we have to somehow get rid of these pressure terms. So let's do an old trick. Namely, we cross differentiate. In other words, we take del del x of equation five and del del y of equation four. Let's do this one first. Since neither of these two terms are functions of x, and these are just constants, we get del del x of del p del y equals zero. When we take del del y of equation four, we see that all these terms are functions of y, and we take the y derivative of this. In other words, del del y of f triple prime plus b over nu f f double prime minus b over nu f prime squared equal one over nu rho bx del del y of del p del x. But we argue that del squared p del x del y is the same as del squared p del y del x. In other words, the order of differentiation doesn't matter, provided that p is a smooth and continuous function of x and y. This tells us that this term is the same as this term, which is zero. Thus, we can integrate with respect to y, and we get f triple prime plus b over nu f f double prime minus b over nu f prime squared. And when we integrate zero on the right-hand side, we get some constant, which I'll call c1. Let's call this equation six. Now let's apply a boundary condition to find this constant c1. Namely, from the boundary layer's point of view, as y goes to infinity, f must go to y, and it follows that f prime goes to one, f double prime goes to zero, 
and f triple prime goes to zero. So these two terms, which have f triple prime and f double prime, go to zero as y goes to infinity, and this term goes to negative b over nu, so six becomes negative b over nu equals c1, or c1 equal negative b over nu. So finally, equation six becomes f triple prime plus b over nu times all these terms collected f f double prime minus f prime squared plus one equals zero. I'll call that equation seven. This is now a similarity equation. It's a little different from our previous ones because we didn't define an eta. Here instead we have f is a function of y. Coordinate x has disappeared from the problem. We now have an ODE for f as a function of y. Why is this a similarity equation? Because we went from u as a function of x and y, and v as a function of x and y, and actually pressure also, where we had PDEs with two independent variables, x and y. We went from that to one ODE with only one independent variable, namely y. If you go back and recall our definition of similarity, we said that we had to reduce the number of independent variables by at least one. Here we've reduced the number of independent variables from two to one, namely from x, y to y. Therefore we can say that Hyman's assumption has achieved similarity in the equation. This will make the solution a lot simpler, of course. Well, finally, keep in mind that we haven't achieved full similarity yet because we still need to check the boundary conditions. We need to reduce the number of boundary conditions to be appropriate for our equation, which is now a third order ODE. So some of our boundary conditions need to combine into the same boundary condition. Let's start with the no-slip condition. At y equals zero, u equals zero. Remembering that u was proportional to f prime, this gives us f prime of zero equals zero. To remind you, I'll write our equations for u and v inside our boundary layer. Well, we also have v equals zero, since no flow can go through the wall at y equals zero. And so from here, f of zero must also be zero. Now we match the boundary layer edge to the irrotational outer flow. You may recall that as y goes to infinity, u must go to bx, which from here implies that f prime of infinity must equal one. This agrees with u equal bx in the potential outer flow. We also know that as y goes to infinity, v must go to negative by, since v equal negative by in the potential outer flow. Well, from here, this tells us that f of y must approach y as y goes to infinity, which is the same as saying f prime of y approaches one as y goes to infinity. In other words, f prime of infinity must equal one. And as we've seen several times here, we're happy when two of these boundary conditions collapse into one. So finally, similarity has been achieved. We went from two second order PDEs for u and v as functions of x and y, where we needed four boundary conditions, to one third order ODE for f as a function of y, where we need three boundary conditions. Thus similarity has been achieved, and we will solve our similarity equation, equation seven, with its three boundary conditions in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.